the first couple or five, six months of doing far, it, I dreaded it. Like it was miserable. I had no free time. Like I mentioned before, I'd wake mm -hmm. up, go into my office, study until work starts, sit at my desk after work was over. I might hang out with my wife for 30 minutes while we're making dinner or something or eating dinner. So I've got to go back to study. Sorry, I can't hang out with you tonight. So I did that for five to six months and it was just miserable. I felt like I was being a bad person if I wasn't studying mm -hmm. and then once I started on this, it's a lot easier to get motivated whenever it's just a couple hours before work in the morning. And then just the 10 minutes of doing little multiple choice questions on your phone. That's not that scary. That's not that bad. So it, it was like night and day difference. That's when some of these podcasts really helped. Me. Welcome to episode 70 of the CPA exam experience podcast from Superfast CPA. I'm Nate, and in today's interview, you're going to hear me talk with Mitch. Mitch is a super fast CPA customer, and I can confirm that he is now done with his CPA exams. At the time of the interview, he had just taken REG, I believe, which was his fourth exam, and he didn't know at the time if he had passed it. But since then, he has emailed me and told me that he passed. And I believe he said in the email, he actually got that score on the same day that his first son was born. So. Congrats to Mitch for numerous reasons, but Mitch has a really good experience to share on his interview because the first five to six months of his study process, it was a really big burden. It was putting a lot of stress on him because he was working full time. And then he felt like outside of work, he had to spend every spare minute studying. But anyways, his first five to six months, it was a really burdensome process. It didn't even lead to a, a passing score. And so the three things that you should listen for on this episode is first, his overall experience and the transformation, the relief that can happen by figuring out the right tweaks to make to your study process. Because once Mitch had these specific breakthroughs that you'll hear on the interview, it really freed him up. It gave him his evenings back. He could spend less time sitting in front of his review course each day. When he did sit down to study, it was a lot easier and it was more effective. And of course, he starts passing sections and it's not taking him five or six months in between sections. So the same person, the same brain, where he felt like he was really struggling in the beginning, just by a shift in his study strategies, when he did sit down to study, how he spent that time, the strategies he focused on, he and anybody, specifically you listening to this, can get dramatically better results by making some of these shifts in how you study. And that's basically our whole message that Superfast CPA is. When you make the right shifts, this whole process can become much, much easier and take you less time every day and give you your life back, so to speak, even as you go through this process. So that's the first thing is just his overall story. The second thing to listen for is how Mitch would use milestones on a daily basis. So instead of just saying, I'm going to study for two hours or I'm going to study for three hours a day, and that might turn out to be really ineffective. If you end up rewatching the same video lecture eight times, you might not have really accomplished anything, even though you spent three hours. So Mitch talks about how he built specific milestones, how he would use a certain number of multiple choice questions, and he had a milestone for the number of mini sessions that he would try to get through each day. And then the third thing to listen for, specifically the importance of getting your study process figured out so that you can completely shut off your brain from any thoughts of CPA study for a few hours each night and how beneficial that is for your mental health, your overall well-being as you go through this process. Because what happens with a lot of people, going back to Mitch's first five or six months, every spare minute of his day, if he was at work, he was worrying about CPA study in the back of his mind. And when he was off of work, he felt like he couldn't even spend time with his wife in the evenings because he was just so behind or just had to spend every spare minute working on CPA study. If your life is entirely, if you're awake, you are worrying about CPA study to some degree your life gets miserable pretty quickly. So the importance of figuring out your study process so that you can nail it each day and what's working 
And then once you do that and you've nailed it for the day, you completely shut your mind off from thinking about CPA study for a few hours every evening. And just the, the huge difference in your overall well-being that provides. So three things really quickly before we get into the interview with Mitch. First, if you're just coming across our YouTube channel or the podcast for the first time, make sure to subscribe either on YouTube or to the podcast or both because we have a lot more of these interviews coming up. These are the most helpful free resource available anywhere for figuring out your own CPA study process because you get to hear successful CPA candidate after candidate and the ins and outs of their entire study journey, the things they struggled with, the breakthroughs they had, and what ended up really working for them. The second thing is to watch one of our free study training webinars if you've never done that. It's one hour training where we walk you through our cohesive study approach, how to use your current review course much more efficiently, much more effectively, and it's the basis of all the strategies you're gonna hear Mitch talk about on this interview. There will be a link in the description for that, or you can just go to superfastcpa.com, and it's the main thing at the top of our homepage. The third thing is to enter our podcast giveaway. You can go to superfastcpa.com slash enter, or again, there should be a link down below in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. Each month as part of this giveaway, we give away three pairs of Powerbeats Pro headphones to our customers and to our not yet customers that are listeners to the podcast. All you have to do to be eligible is to enter that giveaway on that page. So with all that being said, let's get into this interview with Mitch. Yeah, so have you heard any of these other interviews? Do you know how these go? Yeah, I, I listen to almost every one of them okay. <laughs> that you put out since I bought your, since I bought my first bundle, I guess. Awesome. You're all done or you've passed three and you took your last one and you don't know yet. Exactly. So I took my last test, hopefully, uh, which was reg on this past Monday. So a couple of days ago. So I awesome. passed three. I think I've got the fourth one passed because reg is what I do for a living. So <laughs> I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure you nailed it. If you pass the other three and you work in tax, that should be, uh, should be a done deal. That's what I'm hoping. Let's just, uh, we'll start from the beginning. Uh, how long have you been out of school? How long have you been working? And what brought you to doing your CPA at this point in life? So it's, so I'm 32, so it's kind of been a longer winding road than a lot of people um, seem to take. The first time I went to college, I graduated in 2011 with a bachelor's in finance. And so for a couple of years, I was a financial advisor out of school and I didn't really like it because it was just very salesy and that's not really my, my personality. Mm -hmm. My wife is in big four accounting. Her mom, so my mother-in-law actually runs a, a smallish CPA firm and uh, she offered us to take it over once she retired. So I wasn't really feeling the whole financial advisor thing. And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? I took two or three accounting classes. The first time I went to college, I did pretty well in them. I enjoyed them. Fast forward, I quit my, my financial advisor job and went to work for her remotely. So five years, I've been working remotely before it was cool with all this COVID stuff. Yeah. So she, she was like, you've got to get your, you know, your bachelor's in accounting and I want you to sit for the CPA. So I, I did that. So I had to go back to school to get my, I think 150 total hours. So I had to l take a lot of accounting classes online and I, I graduated again for the second time, I think, <laughs> uh, like early, early, I guess the uh, second semester of 2020 or 19, I, my years run together. But then shortly yeah. after that, I took a couple months off and then dove into the CPA, nice. which was fun. <laughs> yeah. When you started by saying the first time I went to college, I was like, okay, I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> Where's That's this funny. Going? Yeah. So you have two bachelors then. Yep. Finance and accounting. Nice. The, just the little prompt you put in here is you said. Super fast CPA completely gave me my life back. It took me roughly six months to pass far without it. So let's go to that. What was your six, sorry, your first six months? It's very similar to the stories that a lot of people on your podcast have. Like, so I, I did Becker because that's all I'd ever really heard about. And I, I, I was actually listening to your last podcast last night to just kind of refresh myself how these went. 
And the lady was like, they have this really fancy dashboard where you can track your progress and everything. So like, I was very focused on having all my, did they do like a proficiency rating on all these mm -hmm. things? I was very focused on getting everything just in the green. So what that meant is you just watch all the lectures. And then after you do the lectures, which range from half an hour to an hour and a half, then you do a skills practice thing, which can be anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. And then you do the multiple choice. So I would want all of my proficiency bars to be green or there was like three stars that you okay, fill in. Yeah. I want them all to yeah. be green. And so like you do all these multiple choice questions until you got them all right. And then you do the Sims. So I was like waking up at five, five 30 in the morning trying to get through a, a module or whatever they were called and it just took forever and so then i'd go to work and then after work i would study another three four hours doing the oh same process just for yeah for six months or however long it took and it was just brutal i had no life <laughs> so that's just how long it took to just get everything checked off into the green fill up all your stars the just the whole dashboard thing to just basically consume every single piece of content or resource in the material or in the, in Becker's course. Yeah. You, you listen to the lecture, like you gotta know this, stop and study this until you, you know, it forwards and backwards. So it's like, I had not taken a test yet. So I thought I had <laughs> to do that. Becker's like what everybody talks about. So that's what I have to do. They know what they're talking about. And it just took a long time to do. Mm -hmm. So, okay. But you did go in and pass far that first time after the five or six months. I, I did not. So, oh. so I, I actually started in, I've got some tabs up here because the dates are in together. I started studying for far for October of last year. So 2020, I took my first test in December 22nd. So the first one, it didn't take a long time, but then I, I failed that one, I think a 68 or something. And in the middle of all that, like. My, my wife's grandpa died I ended up like moving the test back to, to March of 21. And then I passed the second one, but so from okay. beginning to study for far to actually getting the passing score, it was like six months. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, do you remember the, what the first thing was you saw from us? Probably a YouTube ad. As it was a YouTube ad for sure. The internet is weird. How what, you start searching things. They yeah. automatically magically start popping up as ads. Yeah. Like I had been seeing like all kinds of different CPA supplemental material for a while. And it was actually after I passed far, I sat down like that next, it was like a Monday. I started for audit is what I did next. And then I, I started to go about the same way that I did for far. So it was like watching the lecture in the first morning. It was like an hour long lecture. I'm like, I can't do this again. <laughs> and so I remember yeah. I was like, there's this super fast <laughs> CPA thing. The guy said he passed four in a row or three in a row or whatever it was within a couple of months. And so like the next time your ad popped up, I just, I like, actually, I didn't skip it. <laughs> I, I actually listened to it. I said, what the heck? I'll just give it a try. Cause it, and I forgot when that first, like uh, the hour long or whatever mm -hmm. video was. And then, yeah. so yeah, it was, it was from a YouTube ad Then, said, man, I, what have I got to lose? Like, I, I don't want to take two years to do all these tests. So I tried it and then it, like everything you were saying in those, the videos just, it's like, I could have written it myself. It, you were like talking to me directly. It felt like, <laughs> so then I, I bought the audit bundle and then I tell everybody about it since then so okay so yeah, well was... yeah I, that's awesome i'm glad it was that helpful besides the study tools or whatever just what were the key ideas that resonated with you that helped you just make your study process more efficient well it was just the whole idea of spending your time doing what you're actually going to be doing on test day like with the becker format you spend I lose track of how many hours of the day I just like watching videos and stuff mm -hmm. like, and I can only lock into a video for five, 10 minutes on right. a good day. I was a little skeptical about doing like jumping straight into the multiple choice things at first, but after a couple, I think it took a week. I was like, all right, that's all right. This actually works pretty well. But yeah, it was spending like your, spend your time more efficiently doing the stuff you're going to be doing on test day was what really drove it home. Yeah. Me, Cause all that other stuff, like 
I look back at my FAR book and they had you like underline stuff, watch the video and underline stuff. And I never went back and looked at that. And it's just it, like, it, a lot of stuff just kind of seemed pointless. So. Yeah, I mean, I get the position or the idea of a, a review course. It's like all the info is there, but they have to have some way of trying to guide people through it. So they build all these checkpoints into their software, but it really does yeah. just work so much better to view it as here's a set of tools and the idea of do what you're going to do on test day sounds so obvious, but it's obviously not how most people spend their study time. They spend 80% right. of their time, like you just said, watching videos and highlighting stuff that's very like passive learning, uh, learning methods. So maybe 5% right. gets in. So a real low payoff for the time you're putting in, whereas going straight to the questions, and then if you really need the background info, it's like a topic you're not familiar with at all, then you can go back and use the more resources. It's just, yeah, it exactly. just works so much better and, to do it and, like that. Yeah. And, and actually, after I started with Superfast, I don't think I tried to watch one lecture after that. and I couldn't get through it. And I just I did like flashcards or something like I made myself understand it in a different way. Like I, I never watched a video or opened the book after. Uh, I started yeah. an audit. Yeah, a lot and of then, people. And another. Sorry, go ahead. We have a one second delay, I was, so I always I start I, I, talking yeah. before. But yeah, f finish your thought. And then another one of the tools that really I don't know. It's not necessarily a tool, but like a, a mindset was the like little bits of cumulative like review every mm -hmm. day. Like whenever you've got a break, use your app. And Becker actually had a, a, an app that I used. It was like a game. It was dumb, but I, like, I still used it. I and mean, just throughout the day, like that changed stuff, changed things so much for me. Like it really helped. Yep. On the first time through FAR, it takes two and a half months to get through all the material. And then I didn't do any cumulative review. And then they have the spinal review thing that I did. And I was like, I forgot all of this stuff. So it was like, I panicked. Yeah. Yeah. So. Basically trying to relearn everything in two weeks. It's just, when I took FAR the first time, I did the same thing. I was studying, I don't know, seven, eight hours a day, went through everything. And I get in there and start seeing questions. And there was just so many seemingly very simple questions on topics I'd covered. I, obviously, I'd covered it, but I just could not get the recall the specific piece of information. And like, I had the distinct idea mm -hmm. during that test, like, okay, the secret to this is doing re-review on a daily basis, not this final review that you don't right. look at everything for two months and then do a final review. So yeah, that idea yeah. really is just, again, it seems so obvious once you hear it, like constantly mm -hmm. review the stuff you've been through because you're covering literally 200 topics. Yeah, so many. I remember having a very similar thought like in the test to taking far. So this is a, like way easier of a question, <laughs> but I can't remember. It's like, why can I not remember this? Like this, it was so frustrating. Yeah. So your first five or six months, you would study before work and after work. So uh, once yeah. you adopted our whatever strategies or study framework, what did a day of studying look like after that? Well, I'm more of a morning studier anyway, so it was very easy. I just kept my alarm the same, got up between five, five thirty, but just followed your kind of guidelines. I, I just did jump straight into the multiple choice. First, I would read your review notes. I'd try to find in the notes, the section that corresponded to what <laughs> I was doing in the Becker that day. So I'd read the notes. It took maybe five minutes and then I'd go into the questions and like how you say, if you get it wrong, it's not so much get it getting a 75% on your multiple choices that day. It's just actually, like, I think you say, capture the understanding, make sure you read yeah. and understand what they're saying, because it's just weird how this all clicks. Cause you're right. There's four or five topics that they just hit on everything. It is like reading the book and Becker think you have to know 20 things in every lesson and that they only ask questions on like five. Yeah. So I, I would do that in the morning for two hours or for an hour and a half, roughly. And then I do the, the cumulative set of 30 at the end that kind of close up my morning session. I work from home, so it's very easy to, while I'm, you know, working my regular job to just play the audio notes, which I would do a lot. I used 
like I said, I think your review apps to do questions. And then Becker also had that game. So I just studied throughout the day. And then after, after work, I did put it down because I felt good about what I had done. Like you say, you, you get more out of less time mm -hmm. doing it this way than you did before. So I, I felt good about, you know, not having to study in the evening. Yeah, that's awesome. So it, it freed up countless amounts of hours in the evening so I could hang out with my wife and family and friends and all that stuff. So yeah, that's, that's what I mean I know, when I say get my a, life back. That's a huge thing. And it, I think that that's a benefit in itself. It just makes this whole thing not as stressful. There's probably something, I'm not a brain scientist, obviously. There's probably something to giving your brain like a break as well, just taking a few hours and because I think even if people take the evenings off or, or whatever, whenever they're not studying, if their study process is frantic and all over the place and they just have a sense that it's not really working, they're always like worrying mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Whereas when you know what you're doing is working, as long as you nail it the first part of the day or whatever, then you can not worry about it. Yeah. Sort of turn your brain off for a little bit to rest. Yeah. 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 So you use the study tools throughout the day. When did you work in, or if you did you, how did you use practice sims in your? So I would do that more so, I would save those more so for the weekend, like Saturday. I would, I think I would do two sets of 30, multiple choice, and then I'd do a handful of sims. And okay. That's so I, I'd more work those in on the Saturday and the Sunday. And then the closer I got to test, I started to do a little more sims because those so are hard. So I just yeah. like more just so I could see what they look like exactly more than anything, like really trying to memorize how to do every single sim that's out there. That's pointless and impossible. So I just more so see what I might see something similar to on the, on the text day. Yeah. So I, I didn't do a ton of sims throughout the whole thing, but I just hammered multiple choice questions. Yeah. And then you said you made flashcards as well or some form of putting stuff in your own words, kind of? Yep. So as I was going through each chapter, I tried to do this like spare and not go overboard, but like, so chapter one, I would have five to 10 flashcards, some of the main topics. I do that for every chapter. And then I'd try to leave two weeks after the time I finished all the material. And whenever I do my test, I would, I'd have this folder called like MCQ issue. <laughs> I would just. And I would like any, if I do my cumulative sets of 30 or whatever it was, if there was stuff that kept popping up, I would just put those in that folder. And like I said, like you say, rewrite them in your own words. You can understand, just kind of explain it. How you explain things to a five-year-old is what I kept trying to say. Yeah. So then I would do, uh, I would like the couple days before a test, I would really hammer the, the, the flashcards. Yeah. Again, that's just, as long as you do that through your process. You have your weak areas, but you've written it down in an explanation that you came up with, and it's just a totally different thing than, uh, you know, I know you can generate like a testlet from stuff that your review course identifies as your weak areas, which could be helpful mm -hmm. just for actual practice on questions again, but having those flashcards are just, that was another thing for me that I did after failing far. Somehow I ha got the yeah. idea, like, I just need to put this stuff in my own words and my flashcards wouldn't really have made sense to anyone else. Exactly. Yeah. And the bundle that I got with, with Becker, cause I got it because they had flashcards. Cause I'd always use flashcards like in college and stuff. And it seems like they rewrote the book on those things and it mm -hmm. didn't really help at all. So yeah, doing my own was very helpful. I think you basically mentioned, I was just going to say, did you do anything different on the weekends? I'm guessing you would just kind of knock it out in the morning and then take the rest of the day off. Or how'd you do a study on the weekends? Yeah. I let myself sleep in like another hour later, but it was the same process, except I just mix in a couple of Sims at the end of, so I did, I would do the two 30 multiple choice and then two to five Sims, just depending on how I did or how I felt that day. And I'd do a couple of them. And if I felt good about where I was, I wasn't behind in my course or anything, but yeah, that's what I, <laughs> that's what I, that's what I would do. So one question, I, this keeps getting asked in the pro forum. Mm -hmm. Did you have any type of reminder set to, to actually do the mini sessions throughout the day? 
or would you just kind of do it whenever? How did you keep that in mind to just pull out the review notes or even use the the Becker game you were talking about? Just what did you do to remind yourself to do that continuously throughout the day? I didn't really have any like specific thing to like to remind myself, but I was, it was just like a, a game that I would play with myself in my head. He's like, like, I enjoy having my evenings off from this stuff. Mm-hmm. So every time, like before I would jump on Facebook or after I would like kind of use it as like a punishment for getting on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, Yeah, I would make myself sit down and do either like a five from your app or play one of these games in Becker. So, it, it, and I kept, I had kept a spreadsheet of all the multiple choice questions that I did throughout the whole, whatever section I was taking, I would try to get to 150 or 200 a day. And I would just, it would always be up on my computer in the background. And if I'd make lunch or something, I'd do try to do 10 or 20 of them just in a little short bursts Yeah, and try to get to, to try to get to those numbers. So I could like earn my evening so to speak. Okay. So I, I didn't have any like real reminders or anything to say. It was just like a constant like effort throughout the day to, to try to get, get to my, my goal number that I said of, of questions. Yeah. Okay. But that right there. And that's funny because on this new, we've only released two of these, like the new interviews or, I mean, the current ones we've been doing. And for some reason, like, I don't know, five or six of you guys have mentioned kind of the number of a hundred MCQs a day. And I've never, I, I never really aimed for that, but multiple of you guys just in the last week that I've interviewed have like <laughs> said that. And I mean, that's I, maybe not so much the number, but just the idea of, it's like a, um, a quantity, what am I trying to say? It's like a checkpoint that you're trying to hit each day. That's based on a number it's, instead of like, yeah. oh, I watched my two hours of videos, so I'm good, which doesn't mean anything. So yeah, I mean, right. So it almost in a weird way I mentioned, like I was obsessed with having all three green stars in Becker. It was almost like, so if I would, I never thought about this, but like whenever I would get to like my 150 or whatever questions a day, I'd color it green. And yeah. I guess I, I was obsessed with that somehow. So yeah, I didn't actually think about that until this, until just now. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's just a really good idea for people, whoever ends up listening to this episode, because I, I've heard different forms of people would, for their main study session, several people, again, that I just interviewed recently, they only used our stuff with a test bank. They didn't have a full review course. And they would just Mm -hmm. aim for like 100 questions that day. And they divided up the entire section into the number of questions in their Glime test bank or whatever. And then they just broke it down by day. And that's just what they would hit. And then they would aim for like 10 of the mini sessions throughout the rest of their day. But I think just having some number is obviously something that you're shooting for that just shows or would indicate real progress. Like you've done Mm -hmm. something that's more than just spinning your wheels for three hours, sitting in front of your review course. Yeah. Yeah. Something to show that you actually put in the work that day and keep hold yourself accountable to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was going to ask about the the dashboard again. So after you switched your studying, I'm guessing you didn't really worry about the Becker dashboard no, anymore? I don't think it ever got above 35% completed for anything. Because it was like, all, all I would do was just the multiple choices for everything. And then maybe touch on a couple of, you know, sims throughout yeah. that chapter or whatever. Yeah, I got over that real quick in Becker. Yeah, I remember when I studied, I was using Wiley and they had color coded circle bars and stuff. And mine was just red says you're like, you're way behind all the time. Every time I logged in, there'd be like this warning. And I just, I didn't use that whatsoever. Yeah. After, cause like it it would always be stuck on like chapter one, module one, you're like 30% done is what it like that you log in and what you have to do today and I'd be done with all the material doing cumulative reviews like a week before. And they're like, you, you not done with the first chapter yet. Mitch, go back and <laughs> go back and watch our lecture to you. Right. Did you find, I think I know the answer to this, but so your first five or six months, did you ever struggle with just motivation or just the, whatever you want to call it, the mental toll of trying to study that much? And then did you find motivation coming much easier 
once you switched and knew you had this process nailed down? Absolutely. Yeah. Cause when I, the, the first couple or five, six months of doing far, it, I dreaded it. Like it was miserable. Like I had no free time. Like I mentioned before, I'd wake mm-hmm. up, go into my office, study until work starts, sit at my desk after, after work was over. I might hang out with my wife for 30 minutes while we're making dinner or something or eating dinner. So I've got to go back to study. Sorry. I can't hang out with you tonight. <laughs> so I did that for five to six months and it was just miserable. I felt like I was being a bad person if I wasn't studying. Mm-hmm. And then you know, once I started on this, it, it you just, you just, it's a lot easier to get motivated whenever it's just a couple hours before work in the morning. And then just the 10 minutes of doing little multiple choice questions on your phone. That's not that scary. That's not that bad. It's not that right. much of a pain. So it, it was like night and day difference. There were times that using super fast, I would struggle like anyone does. It's yeah, not yeah. fun to study right. <laughs> full of the time, but, and, and then that's actually when some of these podcasts really help and you listen to all these people's stories and that like, they're doing the same stuff. So you're on the right track and it helps a lot. Yeah. That's the main thing we hear about the podcast is like the motivation factor. I, I didn't consider that when we started doing these episodes, but that's the main thing we hear about it. So you're again, your first attempt or your first five or six months, did you study from your phone at all then, or was it strictly just using your full review course? I would say 85% was strictly from the main review course they've got. So that Becker has these two apps. One I tried to do was basically just completely, it was just like the main review course was on the internet. It was like you had to download it. It was all of the lectures and video and MCQs and Sims. And to do like a big giant sim on your phone was not really right, <laughs> an right. option because it's impossible. And then I would use this other game that I keep mentioning, but I didn't use it as nearly as much as I did through okay. this. Like I, the, the screen time on my phone was like insane throughout the last seven months or whatever I did with super fast. Cause every any spare time I would do five questions. Yeah. So that brings me to my, basically my question then is because one thing I think that people discount is the idea of studying from your phone in whatever, three, five, 10 minute chunks. They think how effective could that really be? Were you surprised at how effective that is? And I'm not like looking for you to say how good our study tools were. I'm just saying like in general, recalling the information several times throughout the day, even though it's just from your phone. Could, do you feel like you could tell a huge difference as far as the retention aspect that that gave you? Yeah, I definitely could because I wasn't perfect. Like I would always, for not always, but I would occasionally like skip a day or two on the weekend. And then that Monday I would come back in my, where I wouldn't do like the weekend. I wouldn't be in my review course. I wouldn't be on my phone doing anything. We had the party or I was on a trip. Like I wouldn't look at it at all in my like without fail, almost every time I went back into it, I, I got worse scores just because I wasn't doing that recall stuff mm. and it would take me a day or two to get back up to, to the level of scores that I had before. So I could be, yeah, I mean, it definitely makes a difference, but you wouldn't think of it, like you said, like three to five minute, small five question MCQs, but yours are so, they're so simple and straight to the point and they just keeps everything fresh. Yeah. And that, that, that idea, the, the review course apps, it's cool to have it on your phone, but then it's also, it's a review course in mobile format. So it's, it's not that feasible mm-hmm. to use if you're out in line at the grocery store. That's what I found with when I was studying Wiley had an app and they had a quick quiz, which was actually awesome. You back then you could just press one button and take five questions. Now they've made their app really It's not complicated, but it takes 30 to 60 seconds to actually get into a quiz once you've checked all your options. But anyways, that was one thing that I'd be, I'd get this full strength question with an income statement and a balance sheet and trying to scroll through. And that would just stop me a lot of the times. And so that was a key idea for when we actually came out with an app. Okay. We got to have questions that you can actually just do in your head. You don't have to try to write stuff. Get out the, this tiny little calculator and the, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, they were great because like my wife is pregnant. So we would, we would go to doctor's appointments and everything like that. And just waiting in the lobby, I could just do yours over and over and over again and not have to have a piece of scratch paper on the side to write down, you know, 
do calculations of some of these questions. Yeah. So we've gone through everything. So usually the last thing I ask is even if it's something we already covered, what are your biggest two or three tips for people that are currently studying or maybe people who are like doing it the way you did it the first time? What would be your biggest tips to them? I think you might've mentioned it in one of the pro videos or one of these uh, podcasts, but I think everybody puts this test or these tests way up on a pedestal. You don't have to like teach a course on all this stuff. You just have to pass a test. <laughs> so like I would, it's, it makes it immediately like a lot less intimidating. Like you don't have to recite word for word what they're saying in your review course. So as long as you stick to the, the kind of format that you've laid out, you'll cover everything that you need to. Like you might not be an expert on, you know, it, yeah. like everything. So once I found or discovered that after the first couple of times of taking FAR, it made the whole idea of passing these things seem a lot less intimidating. So definitely keep that in mind at all times and then just be diligent about it. Like you said, do your multiple choice questions as often as you can. Those, it keeps everything top of mind. And then, I don't know, it just, it, it just all kind of clicks. It's, it's really weird how it happens, but yeah, again, it's, it seems just so obvious, almost like dumb to say, but like spending 80% of your time doing what you'll be doing on test day. Yeah. is right. like the, the elusive obvious is, is what I, I actually call it that it's just mm -hmm. such a simple idea. And it just leads down to how you would actually study on a daily basis instead of how most people study. And it's a lot easier, way more effective. And doesn't have to take over your life. So exactly. I would get to the point on, on tests, like the one I took on Monday, I was done. It was, it was red. So it was 38, two things of 38 questions. I was done with them in an hour. So I had three hours to work on the last couple or the, the Sims. Yeah. That's and so awesome. that in itself helped. Yeah. So the whole process just is great. I tell everybody, like my wife is in accounting and I tell all of her people who are, are doing it. I was like, if you try to sit the fast CPA <laughs> stuff, if they're going through it. You can tell whenever somebody is, is yep. you know, studying for these things. They're like, I was like, just try it. Like, it's great. Yeah. I appreciate you telling people about it. So you had the pro course as well then. So you had the full, yep. like our strategy videos, you went in and watched all those. Yeah. I watched those first before I really dove into. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's another thing that we. One of my biggest frustrations is trying to get people to watch those all the way through. We have these welcome emails and we say, if you, if the ideas on the training made sense, go in and watch those videos. Cause I'll get a lot of questions too, with stuff that's answered in those videos. And, uh, yeah. it's like the whole sharpen the saw analogy, like just take the four hours to watch these videos and you will be able to like slice through lessons. It's just so much easier. So. Mm -hmm. I thought when you said you had the audit bundle that maybe you just had the, the audit study tools for in the beginning and not the pro course. So yeah. yeah I, yeah, I had the pro course. I forgot what it was, but yeah, I, I definitely watched those before because I was like, I don't want to miss any of this stuff. Like I don't want to take any longer time doing this than I have to. So right. like I was there for any tips or tricks that you had. Awesome. Well, yeah, Mitch, it was fun to chat and hear your story. I'm, I'm glad our stuff could help and kind of give you your life back. Let's say congrats on being done in advance. Make sure to email me Thank when you. you find out though. I definitely will. I definitely will. Thank you for coming out with this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad it was helpful. Okay, so that was the interview with Mitch. I'm sure you found that very helpful. That was a great interview. He just had a lot of really good tips and insights to share. And again, the overall message, which is essentially the same as many of our other past interviews. You take a person who is really struggling with this process and once they just figure out the right strategies to apply when they do sit down to study, the results they're getting completely changes. It's the same person with the same brain, the same IQ or whatever. It is all about the strategies. When you sit down to study, what do you actually do? Going along with that, again, if you want a deeper dive, all in one cohesive presentation about how to use our study strategies to get much better results in less time from your review course, sign up for one of our free study training webinars at superfastcpa.com. 
and make sure to subscribe on YouTube and to our podcast so you don't miss future episodes. And then also sign up for our free podcast giveaway with the link in the description or by going to superfastcpa.com slash enter. So thank you for listening or watching. We'll see you on the next episode.